Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. And today we're going to get into the topic of alternative ways of having a family for men in particular. Um, now, obviously there has been many times where in this modern day and age now that women will sometimes do things like have a a donor or you know a guy where they go to maybe a clinic and whether it's a friend a clinic or anything like that and then they they have no father in this situation they haven't found the right person they end up getting themselves pregnant with a donor and then they end up having a kid and raising the kid on their own i was having a conversation with a friend um the other day about how the dynamic of Things are changing. And I've mentioned this on the channel before about how things are changing. The dating game is changing. The dynamic of the way people build is changing. The way everyone goes about everything just in general is just changing. Um, and so with that being the case, it's never been spoken about really as, well, as a man to have that option of building a, a, a home or building a family without the mom present, alternative family building, alternative ways of building, a fa of having a family. Whereas, like I said, there's always been something that spoke about when it comes to women, because I guess maybe it's, I don't know if it's just um, the biological factor, or maybe it's just, you know, the, the ticking clock factor. I don't know what it is. But generally speaking, um, there's nothing that's really been explored for men. So I want to kind of get on that topic because, as I said, as having a conversation with a friend of mine about how things are changing, the climate's changing with everything in the dating world and whatnot, we're getting to a place where, unfortunately or fortunately, however you want to view it, where um, people are less together. The dynamic of family is left less together. This doesn't just include the immediate family, like you know the, the husband, the wife, and the kids type of setup. It is also extending to your extended family is becoming um, more distant as well and, and not as close or whatever the case is. What I mean by that is generally speaking, back in some of the days, you had usually a more close knit family setup where you had your immediate family, the mom, the dad, the kids, and then you would have aunts and uncles in the mix. And, you know, so the kids would go see their cousins, stay at their aunt's house uncles and aunts had place when the parents would get away or they do something, they drop the kids off at other family members house. When they did that, you got to know your aunts and uncles, you got to know your cousins really well. Um, and then from that point, your cousins did the same. Your aunts and uncles will drop the kids off to your home and you would see your cousins, you'd spend time with them. So now you knew all of your, the, your, your family members on your, adjacent age level or sibling level, you know, or, or whatnot, um, your peers. And then you also knew your elders in the form of your uncles and aunts, your um, grandparents level age, even if it was extended. So we'll say, you know, maybe a cousin's grandma or grandpa, whatever the case is. So you kind of viewed them also as like extended grandparents um, and even sometimes if you, if you had this much life going on in your family structure, you had the great grandparents all at the top with their, you know, sisters and brothers. So you had that extended reach and it had this very big, deep dynamic where you knew everyone. So as you got older, there's so many people you knew you, you could have things like gatherings, family reunions, all this other kind of stuff. And there'd be so many people as time moves forward. Now you have less of that going on. You have less family reunions going on. Sadly enough. You have less people even appearing at funerals, something a lot of people don't think about. But when you lose that family dynamic, you also lose that impact on funerals where a lot of people show up and you got maybe a handful of people show up. So and it looks sad when you have like maybe some funerals where you've got like 100 people show up and you have some funerals where there's like maybe 15 people. And it's like, OK, what's going on here? So I digress and go back to the point of this is that we're losing all that now. Something to be addressed is the fact that that's being lost. Sometimes that happens because of, and I would say that's directly related to the connection we have with our partners nowadays with the fact that 
Today, we're living in an age where a lot of people is very fast paced. There's just the in and out of relationships, whether it's the dating realm, whether it's the marriage realm, whether it's anything, the attention span for everybody, even when it comes to interest is short, is, is short term nowadays. So this includes things like just the things that you're into, you, you know, having hobbies. Instead, most people just want to get online. They watch some social media content. It's entertaining. You jump to the next thing. A lot of people aren't really stuck in in those kind of traditional ways of even having long term hobbies, getting out there with friends and snack. So I say that to give the grand scheme of the picture. But once again, to get back to my point, um, everything has become fast paced, especially in the dating world and the, even the marriage world, and everything feels temporary. So building a family now is not as concrete. It doesn't go hand in hand with relationship. Where back in the days, the idea of relationship and family went together. Those two things are starting to become a very separate concept in the way of that you can get with somebody and before you know it overnight, you guys are broken up, but you have kids, you have this family, but now the family dynamic is separate. So relationships and family do not necessarily go hand in hand anymore the way they used to. So with that being said, we're taking a look at alternative ways that men can do in regards to having a family set up without actually having to connect it with a relationship. I think that's important nowadays because what's happening in this new dynamic of where relationships are not lasting, it's harmful for men and women to sometimes put all their eggs in the basket of trying to start a family with somebody and things fall apart and they lose everything that they have. Now, I'm not saying that this is a plus in terms of this is better than having a regular family dynamic, but what I'm saying is these alternatives are things that people should consider because um, it's not spoken about, but it's a real life problem that the dynamic of families are, are dying out. So with that being said, we're focusing on the man aspect of it because I know a lot of times this is more publicly spoken about when it comes to women, but it has never been spoken about really when it comes to men. So a couple of alternative options are obviously having a surrogate. Um, I think the term would be is it a surrogate mom or, or I think the term is surrogate mom, but where somebody is pretty much holding the baby for you. So whether you are or not using the eggs. So there's two different dynamics of that. There is where you have someone who donates eggs that you can just pay for the same way women get sperm donors. You can get an egg donor. And then if you know someone who can either hold and carry the baby for nine months for you, whether that's a friend or even a family member or anything like that, or you can probably, you can have someone who actually do that also. So you would not only just get an egg donor, you'd also get someone who would carry the child for you. But if you uh, alternatively was able to know someone, maybe it's a close friend, you could have that same dynamic with them. The only difference is that you're writing up this paperwork that's going to say legally they're your child as the man. They're not the woman's child. Even if you wanted the uh, woman to be able to have a bond with the child, that's fine. But you still have that paperwork written up saying that this you have primary rights off the back. There is no them getting rights because essentially it's no different than, um, like I said, a, a, a donor. A, mo a surrogate mom who's holding that that space to give the man a child, similar to like I said, you have sperm donors who where that sperm donor will never know the child that is created from his donation. So in that same vein, it's that same concept. Like I said, so whether you can have where the mother is unknown completely because you go to some kind of institution that does that, or whether the mom is known, but the father keeps all the rights. Like I said, this talk from the perspective of men because women probably have already, they had, there's enough information on this. So I don't want it to think that I'm just saying this for the positive of men, but it's more so that women have done this. This is a regular thing for women to do. They know about it. There's, there's a lot of talk about that, but there's no talk for men. So I don't want you to come across to think that it's about being biased towards men. It's not. It's just the fact that it's an unspoken thing for men. So that's why I'm going to tackle it from that perspective. So um, in this scenario, men, the guy would have all the rights. He can allow the, the, the person who is being the surrogate mom to see the child and have that dynamic. And in that case, since it's not a relationship you have with them, they're just representing as the mom. And, and if their egg was the, uh, the original egg for the child, then they would be the mom. But it's just not giving that person the ability to, well, one, it's you're not having a relationship with them in terms of intimacy. So it's just more of like a friendship dynamic in which they're the mom. So this is a way of creating a family in which you don't have any of those 
social problems, like relationship, dating, intimacy type of problems where they're mad at you because you didn't do something. It's like you don't have that kind of relationship with them. You're dating, you're doing your own thing like you would a single parent, but you have them there as the mom if that's the case. Um, so we're first going to tackle that dynamic where this person is actually in the life of the child, but they're not, they don't have ownership of the child. Um, and in that case, or parental rights, in that case, there's this kind of balance of how things are operating in terms of that one parent has pretty much this kind of controlling factor of the dynamic of it. Like I said, like a single parent, so it's not to sound like this bad thing. It's just no different than a single parent. But the only difference is now you have the other parent who's actually still inside the picture. And you may never, you, you guys might have a solid friendship where you never kind of lose that. But since one person is kind of really in control of the dynamic, you don't have that kind of push and pull uh, where you guys are fighting over the way things are going down. Alternatively, you could have a situation where there is no mom in the picture and you just raise that kid and you have, you know, other family members of yours and relatives that are female figures that help you raise the child to get that female perspective because every child needs a man and female perspective in their life to be balanced. Um, generally speaking, the father and the mom, generally speaking. And so you can compensate that the way most people do with having other family members in the picture. So if you're just a single dad doing it like that and you're raising the kid alone, you can have female influence in the picture through your family members, but yet at the same time, you're able to continue your legacy where for a lot of men nowadays, they're being told and being uh, instructed to build first rather than building with someone. Because like I said, nowadays, relationships don't normally necessarily are guaranteed to last. So by this dynamic, you're able to, um, you're able to build your empire, build all, you know, you, you, you start working, you get your money, you start investing. And look at previous uh, previous episodes on this channel in regards to things like investing and building up and whatnot. But essentially, and we speak about this all the time on the channel, but essentially you're building up your legacy, you're building up your, your money, your resources, your investments, you're putting together a future for yourself, but you just need someone to pass it along to. So in this scenario where you're the single dad um, doing, you know, a kind of donation, donated egg, surrogate mom type of setup, Essentially, what's happening is you now have someone to pass your legacy down to, and now you can keep building separately from the idea of you need to find a relationship and make it work with somebody so that way you can actually have a legacy. You don't need to do that. So that's the purpose of, of that dynamic. Um, now, I mentioned that in terms of that kind of setup, like I said, but also you could just have someone who's a friend of yours and have that where even if it's not, say, something through donation. The other alternative, it's just straight up you and a friend who you know and you have no in intimate attachment to and they don't have it towards you and you guys have a kid together and that way you guys raise it from, from a standpoint of you guys are being friends that care about each other, but it's not in that kind of dynamic. So there's never arguments because most of the time fighting and disconnect comes from having an intimate relationship with someone rather than just you, you know, um, having a kid with them, trying to build a family, it really comes from that aspect of you're mine, I'm yours. And if you screw up or you don't do things the way I want you to, now nah, I'm upset. Where if that aspect's eliminated, you might be able to have a friend where you have that kind of bond with, and then you're able to have a kid and raise a kid and do things like that. So that's just a kind of a little bit of alternate perspectives when it comes to that. Obviously, there's always adopting as well for a single dad to just, for a, an individual man, I will call him single dad until you actually have the kid. But uh, a, a man who's by himself to adopt a kid, you can always go that route too and have someone to pass down your legacy. But if you know that you, um, you know, are capable of re, you know, uh, reproducing and you have, there's nothing wrong with your genes, there's nothing wrong with your ability to do it, then the idea of having somebody who is a donor for you is probably one of the key and best options. So that way you could say you passed along your DNA and then you have your own child to pass your legacy that you're building up for and to. So just wanted to throw it out there, you guys. Post in the comments if you guys have any thoughts on this. Have you guys ever thought about things like that? Um, you know, what do you think in terms of the new landscape of dating and marriage and how things are going, at least inside the US? I can't speak in other countries, but how do you feel about that? What are your thoughts on that? Like, do you 
Do you feel like you agree that things are not where they should be? Are you one of those people who think, no, everything's fine? Um, are you one of those people who feel that regardless, no matter what, the family dynamic should still try to aim to be traditional, even when for a lot of situations it's not working? Should people still just push for that anyway? Uh, and if it works, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. Or what are your thoughts? As always, you guys, comment, like, share, subscribe. Be safe. Take care. I'll catch you guys in the next video.